suffrage of the silliest folk has made a circus of the popular vote, even in the president's race in 1920, when our story takes place. Talkies were now on the silver screen. The biggest stars were rarely seen, except in front of dazzled crowds in movies with actors speaking aloud. No surprise then that a group of barons chose a film star, Whitey Aarons, to cut as presidential timber, a jaw so firm, a walk so limber, that the men took note and the ladies swooned when he left and dashed and spoke and crooned. He knew little of treaties and navies and boats, but his manner so strong would inspire the vote. And so, after mounting a strong campaign in the press and on radio and screen in the main, as momentum built up in both city and town, a stroke of the brain pulled our candidate down. A coma would clearly disqualify, but not in his financial backers' eyes, for, having invested in a winning hand, they were not about to abandon their man. Could a man good as dead go the final mile? Well, as long as his face could be formed in a smile, and his public announcements well-crafted and neat, they still felt their candidate might not be beat. Could such a scenario really prevail? Well, that is the substance and meat of our tale.